Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Game with the Fan TV, man. Back at you on this video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Also, comment down below your thoughts on the video. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Look. All right, man. So, yesterday, the news broke that the Ravens were going to put the non exclusive tag on Lamar Jackson. Okay, $32 million cap hit. Um, he's a free to negotiate with other teams. We expected the market to be jumping, just like that, right? At least, at least that's what I expected. Okay. Um,. Lamar signs this, not not signs. The Ravens placed the tag on Lamar at three o'clock, three fifteen, something like that. Within ten minutes, five teams like drop out, right? Teams that need quarterbacks, and everybody in the comments was on yesterday. Oh, Atlanta's not out. Atlanta's out. Atlanta's out. Look, when I did that video, the whole day prior, Atlanta was in. There was this guy. His name is Matt Lombardo ATL. I believe he's he's, he's a sports writer down there. He was saying that the Falcons are very, very interested in Lamar Jackson, right? Then as soon as the tag gets signed like that, Falcons are out. It's strange, right? Okay. Then the Falcons freaking official Twitter account retweets uh, um, an article from a journalist saying that the Falcons are not pursuing Lamar Jackson, that, that they like Desmond Ritter. It's like, okay, I, that's, 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 that's interesting. That's interesting. Then, you know, people think the Dolphins are in, right? Dolphins cut Byron Jones, say some cash space. The Dolphins come out and say, um, or Mike McDaniel, you know, the head coach says that, you know, we like Tua. He's for our system. We're not interested in any other quarterbacks. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Then the commanders come out. Then, then a commander reporter says he's not coming here. So now three teams dropped out. Then you got, you got the Panthers, right? The Panthers owner... Dave Tepper has thrown out a lot of money to, just the start of you know this this Panthers regime on coaches especially. They're out. They're not looking for Lamar Jackson. Huh. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Then you get the Raiders who said they're out, but then the Raiders said that they're actually in. They're interested in any quarterback. They haven't ruled on anybody else, including Lamar Jackson. It seems like that you know it was too many teams saying they was out, so the Raiders couldn't just hop on the, on, the, on that train. Uh, but I will say this: the Raiders being out, supposedly, it makes sense because they are cash poor. Uh, Mark Davis and the Raiders are infam infamously cash poor. They don't have a lot of money on hand, so they might not be able to set aside two hundred plus whatever Lamar Jackson wants in escrow. They might not be able to do that. Okay, fair enough. But this is the issue with that: all of these teams coming out the exact moment he gets signed. It's almost like collusion. A handshake agreement amongst the owners to say, hey, look, man, uh, Bashadi say, you know, we're going to put this non-scripted tag on Lamar Jackson. We want to show him that, you know, what he's looking for is not out there. So as soon as we put this tag on him, you got to say that you're out, right? They're going to be looking at y'all. Y'all the teams that need quarterback, so say you're out. That's collusion. Um, And this is why, right? I'm not here to defend Eric DaCosta. I'm not here to tell you Eric DaCosta is the best general manager in the league. I'm not here to do that. But what I am here to tell you is this. This is why, this to me, this negotiation was never about Eric DaCosta. Never. This is about the Billionaire Boys Club. This is about Steve Bashotti and the other owners trying to get the players in line. That's all this negotiation has been about. I brought this up in the previous video. As soon as Deshaun Watson signed that contract... Literally, he might not he might not have been the very first owner, but he was one of the first owners. But Shadi was out there publicly slamming the deal. This ain't the new norm because the Browns did it. Don't mean that we're going to do that. Uh, one organization that doesn't decide everything for everybody else, right? So this should be no surprise to anybody. Okay, you got these owners, right? They're worth these billions of dollars. But they want to be selective of how they use it. They didn't become billionaires by being good people. Right? And I'm not here to, to trash in them or anything like that. They got there by finding a part in the labor market and exploiting it. Simple as that. So if they can have this business in the NFL that makes billions of dollars, but keep the labor in the NFL as cheap as possible, they're going to try to do that. Best believe they're going to try to do that. And this all stems from Deshaun Watson. OK, listen, they want to make an example that uh, uh, one team that did with Sean Watson, you other quarterbacks, 
That's not happening with y'all. All right. We like y'all. Great. You're the leader of the franchise. Don't care. This is about business. What happened with Deshaun Watson ain't going to happen anywhere else. And we're going to make it clear right here with Lamar Jackson. Because he's the one that's he's the one quarterback that's chose to stand with the NFL PA and try to get a guaranteed deal. Not fully guaranteed, but a high guarantee number, right? Okay. So that's the next point. People are gonna make the NFL PA the villain. The NFL PA is doing what they have to do. And that's try to get these players guaranteed deals. Now, if you're a Ravens fan to say, all right, why do it have to be my quarterback that the guy do this on? I hear you some way. But if not Lamar Jackson, then who? Then who? who? who who's going to be the guy to fight for it? Because Kyler Murray came, uh, sorry, Russell Wilson came up. Kyler Murray came up. Straight, straight. Didn't, didn't even fight for it. Took the next deal in line. Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Jalen Hurts, all have agents. They're probably going to take the next deal in line. So who are we talking about as the quarterback that's going to say, hey, look, man, pay us what is, what's the value and let help us reset the market? Who is it going to be if it's not Lamar Jackson? Now, I get the argument of the NFLPA should have fought for this harder in the CBA. That's the part where I agree with a lot of people on, okay? As soon as the NFL owners say, hey, look, we want more games. So now we want 17 games. Eventually, they'll probably play 18 games, eventually, right? Players aren't going to like it. Fans will love it. Get more games. All right, whatever. But eventually, they're probably going to play 18 games. But as soon as the NFL owner said, we won 17 games, the NFL players should have, should have put it on the table for guaranteed contracts. Should have put it on the table, at least. Instead, other things were put on the table. I can't get into the specifics of everything, but you can look it up, it's out there. They put other things on the table, you know, less practices, uh, less padded practices, things like that. Off days. Things that make sense for them. Don't get me wrong. Things that make sense. I'm not saying it was the wrong decision. But when you see this, when you see this owners club come together and say, hey, look, there is a talented player out here, a 26 year old unanimous MVP. And you can say, yeah, that was three years ago. Um, da, da, da. Whatever. I don't care. I've seen Carson Wentz get passed around the NFL because of what he did in that one season when he probably would have won an MVP if he didn't tear his knee up. And I uh, think he got hit like week 15 or something. If he didn't tear his knee up, he probably was an MVP that year. And since then, he's been passed around the league with he's trying to unlock his potential. To get back to that that player he was before the ACL, so don't tell me that teams are just not willing to pay what Lamar Jackson owes or what, what, they, what, what, my, what Lamar Jackson costs. Don't tell me that because that's not the truth. These owners are. And I'm not here to paint anybody as the villain, the bad guy, but this ain't about a general manager not want to pay his quarterback. It's just not. It, it, it's just not simple as that. This is about the owners trying to make a point and had the players fall in line, okay? Because there's no other reason for this many teams who need quarterbacks to come out and readily say, we're not interested. Before negotiations even get to the point of starting, they didn't even have a conversation with Lamar Jackson before they said they weren't interested. That's just bad business. Listen, that's a talented quarterback out there. Yeah, you got you guys got top picks in the draft. That's even more enticing, you know, to give that up. Okay, great. Have a conversation with the guy. See what he wants. Now, obviously, they probably had talked to Bashadi. Bashadi probably told him, told him what he wants. Maybe maybe that's what happened. But I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, you know, what's happening to Lamar Jackson is just, you know, his asking price is too high. I, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Um, Just because, like I said, we talked about Deshaun Watson. Last year, there was a bidding war for Deshaun Watson. Multiple teams. Two of the teams that said they're not interested in Lamar Jackson were interested in Lamar. Was interested in Deshaun Watson. The Panthers extremely interested. The Falcons extremely interested. Now Lamar Jackson's out here, and now it's I'm backing off. I'm not interested. That doesn't make sense. That's not logical. And honestly, at the center of it, I'm I'm, I'm sad for Lamar Jackson. But at the end of the day, he will get paid by somebody, right? But he has to be put out here on Front Street as the as the example being made of because he dared to try to go against the system and get players better deals, better contracts. Um, uh, listen, at the end of the day, Lamar Jackson will be a, eventually, eventually, <laughs> he'll be a very, very rich man. You know what I mean? A very, very rich man. Um, but the owners are trying to make a point. And it's as simple as that. Um, 
you know, when you look at the league, you look at how much money they make. This is the one of the few leagues that doesn't have a guaranteed contract. One of the few leagues. It might might be the only one. I could somebody correct me if I'm wrong right, right with that statement, all right? But I know the MLB does. I know NBA does. Um, so those are the three major leagues right there. NFL, NBA, MLB. So at least in America, you know. So two of the three have contract, guaranteed contracts. This one doesn't. And this one is the most violent game. Okay. Um, I've said this before. We seen DeMar Hamlin, you know, die on the field, you know, and that's not being dramatic. You know, they had, they had to revive him. Okay. Imagine if he would have signed a big deal, signed a big contract, right? Now say after he signed that contract, what happened to him happened, right? Okay. He gets resuscitated, but he can never play football again. He's never going to see the money on that deal. So the owners get to put out fake numbers and not pay what they owe. Right, like the Bills last year, they gave Von Miller that almost two hundred million dollar contract, something crazy, right? That one hundred eighty, two hundred million dollars, something, and he's like what thirty four years old. They have no intention of giving him all that money, not a single intention of doing it. Okay, make the owners pay what they owe. That's why I'm always on the player side. I I, I can't see myself being on the owner side. I can't. I don't I don't turn the games on on Sunday, Monday, Thursday for a shot at the owner in the press box. I don't. I turn the games on to watch the players play. Simple as that. That's why we're all here, right? To watch the guys play. So if they put their bodies on the line and then they can have that contract cut underneath of them because they did what was asked of them, that's not right. And that's my main point about it, all right? Uh, Lamar Jackson, like I said, he'll be a very, very rich man, but the owner's trying to make an example of him right now, and it's it's sad to see on a lot of levels, to be quite honest with you, but that's my thoughts on it, man. Um, I'm going to get out of here, man. Let, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. If you say to this point in the video, consider hitting that subscribe button, man. We got a lot more Ravens content coming, uh, but uh, it's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.